Hi everyone! On behalf of the Francis Lehman Loeb Art Center, I'd like to welcome you to our third installment of our Art at Home video series. My name is Allie and I'm a summer intern for the Loeb. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I've been doing my work remotely, so this series is designed to help you bring a little bit of the Loeb into your living room or wherever you make art. Hopefully, you'll be able to draw inspiration from our collection even if you can't see it in person right now. Today's video will discuss an art movement known as Surrealism. Surrealism was a movement that gained popularity in the 20th century, around the 1920s. Surrealist artists believe that our most interesting thoughts and feelings were hidden in our subconscious hidden so deep within our brains that we couldn't even find them ourselves. And they looked for ways to create art that would uncover and express those hidden feelings and thoughts. Surrealistic art might appear highly abstract or realistic, but in most cases, this movement of art depicted unusual scenes that would cause a startling or odd sensation to look at. Artists sometimes tried to depict their dreams, and they depicted images of ordinary, realistic things put together in bizarre combinations that would never happen in real life. This created an eerie or fantastical effect. One of the most well-known surrealist artists is Salvatore Dali, who's known for his works depicting melting pocket watches. The Loeb houses many fascinating works by the Spanish artists, most notably his Alice in Wonderland illustrations. While Alice Adventures in Wonderland was written by Lewis Carroll 100 years before Dali made these illustrations, you can see how the artist plays with extending surrealist ideas into the creation of these dreamlike scenes. For example, in the image to the right, Dali depicts the rabbit from the story. However, the representation of the rabbit is created out of a fuzzy shape, surrounded by odd colors and unidentified dark marks. Like most surrealist works, they reflect the distorted and slightly creepy world of Alice in Wonderland. Juxtaposition, the unusual pairing of two seemingly unlike objects, is one of the key elements in surrealist imagery. American artist Kay Sage utilizes juxtaposition in her work, Small Portrait. A work like Small Portrait causes the viewer to do a double take. The shape of a human head is depicted, with a mass of lines imitating hair peeking out over the top of the figure's head. However, the face is not human. The face is made up of depictions of varying textures and patterns, including what appears to be an architectural scaffold, some sort of fabric, and other unidentifiable objects. All of these elements are painted in the same color scheme and shape of a normal human portrait, making the image all the more strange. Forming a human figure out of unrecognizable objects and shapes shows up often in surrealism, as you can see in the scenes of Swiss artist Kurt Zeligman. This Zeligman work depicts the riddle of the Sphinx in the ancient Greek story of Oedipus. You can tell that the Sphinx and Oedipus are depicted by the human-like stance of the figure on the left and the lion's paws of the figure on the right. However, their bodies are made up of strange, mostly unidentifiable objects. Another important element in surrealism is the idea of randomness, objects or events that are by chance, not predicted or planned. For the surrealists, the physical and mental process of creating a work of art was just as important as the imagery depicted. They like to incorporate randomness into their art processes because they believed it would help them tap into the less predictable and less reasonable part of their mind. Here's a work by German artist Max Ernst. He created the background pattern of this work by first squeezing paint between two surfaces, then separating the surfaces to reveal the spontaneous textures formed by the paint's behavior. Ernst then gets a random idea from the patterns and transforms these textures, adding to them and turning them into a larger work of art. Inspired by surrealism and its idea that randomness can generate interesting art, the following activities are designed to help you tap into your subconscious. So grab some supplies, keep an open mind, and let's get started. For this activity, all you really need is paper and a writing utensil of some sort. However, you can use whatever art supplies slash materials are available to you to create your work of art inspired by the activity. I enjoy using markers and colored pencils, so I'll be using these supplies for my work. This activity works best if you have a partner, so call up your best friend on the phone or hang out with whoever you may be quarantining with. You can also do this activity solo. The activity is essentially a word association game. Think of a random word, any word, and write it down. Your partner then reads that word and writes down their own word. 
This process can continue until you fill a page or for as long as you can before going in circles. Then, once you're done, randomly select a number, something that isn't too big or too small depending on how many words you've written. I randomly selected four as my number. I'm gonna cross out every fourth word. You don't wanna use too many words or else your work may become a little jumbled or overcomplicated. Try and pick a number between four and six. Then, based on these words, I'm going to create a drawing. The drawing itself can be made of whatever materials you like. In my case, the words I am drawing inspiration off of are bridge, envelope, stone, and jade. When creating your image, you can keep a lot of factors in mind. For me, I decided to turn my four words into a landscape because a lot of my words seem to refer to natural elements like stone, jade, and bridge. Find unique ways to incorporate the words into your drawings. For example, because of the presence of the word jade, I'm using a lot of green tones. Remember, your work doesn't have to be realistic just because I've chosen to be realistic. Your work can be a little more abstract as long as it embraces the subconscious and the strange. And here is my finished product. I have chosen to depict the bridge out of envelopes and incorporated the stone and jade into the little figures on top of the bridge and in the rocks below it. You can do this activity multiple times with a bunch of different words to see what you can come up with. My next realism inspired activity today is a process known as automatism. Automatism by definition is any action that is performed without conscious thought or intention. The surrealists often tap into this automatism in their drawings, attempting to utilize this subconscious thought to inspire their works. To imitate this sort of organic drawing, the activity today will be a blind drawing. You will need a drawing utensil and paper. The rules for this activity are simple. Close your eyes, put your drawing implement to the paper, and randomly draw. You can either try to draw something in your mind or draw whatever shapes feel natural. Try to fill the page as best you can and stop whenever you feel like you've done enough. One step I would recommend is to draw over your pencil line in a permanent marker. This keeps the drawing authentic to the line that you've created. Now you can add to your drawing. For example, I think these lines resemble figures, so I'm turning this drawing into a landscape featuring three figures. You can transform your line into whatever you want, but the only rule is that you cannot erase your original line contour. You can make your work abstract or realistic. You can use one medium or mixed media. Decide what materials you want to use based off of your own instincts and really have fun. The next activity is a game called Exquisite Corpse, which was popularized by French surrealist artists. Here's how it works. For this activity, you will need drawing utensils, paper, and one or two partners. But you can also do a version of the game by yourself. The amount of players you have translates to the amount of folds that you give the paper. For example, I'm going to pretend to play the game with three people, so I'll fold the paper horizontally in two places. Make sure you fold the paper in both directions. I will also fold the paper down the center to serve as a guiding line to align our figure. This step is optional, however it can be helpful if you're playing with people who don't draw a lot or you just want to use it as a reference point. Player 1 initiates the drawing by folding the paper so only the top section is visible. They then do their best to fill the section of the paper with the head slash top of a figure. This figure can be drawn in any style, material, or to any scale. You can use the middle fold as a rough center line for your figure, or you can just ignore this line completely. The figure can be an extremely realistic human being, a stylized monster, or anything in between. Once player one's section is filled, they will fold their paper away so only the section of paper that is visible is the fold below theirs. And if you are only doing this game with two players, only fold the paper into two sections. And if you're playing on your own, as I am, you can fold the paper as many times as you like, but try to put some time in between your drawings so you forget what you've drawn previously. This will attempt to imitate the randomness sought by surrealists. Player 2 then follows the same steps as player 1, without any knowledge of what player 1 has drawn in their section of the drawing. Player 2, however, is assigned the midsection of the creature. They can draw a broad-chested human being, the scaly front of a dragon, or anything in between. Again, try to fill the section of the page and use the centerfold of the section for guidance. When you're finished, 
fold over your section and pass on the final blank section to the last player. Player 3 repeats the process, but drawing the bottom section of the figure. Whether it be hooves, heels, or bare feet, keep creativity in mind as you fill the section of your page. Remember, when filling the section of your page, you don't have to fit just the figure. You can draw the sky surrounding the figure or the ground on which they are standing. Finally, once your third player is done, open the folded paper to reveal your figure. If the figure looks strange, disjointed, and unusual, good! That's the fun of the game. The Surrealists value the randomly generated, strange-looking results of this game and would use them as inspiration for their more formal works. On behalf of the Loeb, thanks so much for joining me for another Art at Home video. This is likely going to be my last video for the summer, so I hope you've enjoyed the series. As usual, if you want to learn more about any of the works listed in this video, please visit our website listed at the end of this video and in the bio below. Additionally, sign up for our email newsletter to receive weekly updates on Loeb at Home events and activities. Finally, if you've tried out any of the activities included in my Art at Home series, feel free to send images to our Instagram page or our email address. Have a great day. Stay happy, creative, healthy, and safe.